Hi, this is Dr. Howard Rosenthal. In my last video, I told you a funny little story to teach you a key principle of research and program evaluation. Today, we are going to do something completely different. So, first, go get your scale. Yes, you heard me correctly. I said your scale. Not your postage scale, since we are going to weigh you. And bring it into the room, or if it's easier, bring your electronic device you are listening to this podcast on into the room with the scale. Let me pause for a moment so you can do that now. Okay, great. First, step on the scale using your left foot first. Jot down your weight. By the way, this works best with a digital scale with a fresh battery, but any scale will work. Now, step on the scale yet again, but this time first with your right foot and again write down your weight say 159.3 or 223.6 pounds, whatever. Since the experiment has nothing to do with changing your weight, this won't be yet another video telling you to go on the Mediterranean diet, how to fall in love with kettlebells, or urging you to perform a high-intensity training workshop. Next, Move the scale a few feet on the exact same surface. Again, check what you weigh this third time, not worrying about which foot you use to step on the scale this time. Once again, move the scale on the floor a few feet in another direction. Get reading number four. Finally, Turn the scale around physically so the part giving you the reading is facing a different wall. Take your final and fifth reading. Let me pause for a second so you can do that. All right, you should have five readings if you've been following along of your weight if you missed a trial, it's probably not going to make that big of a difference. You, my dear reader, have just completed an experiment on test reliability, and I doubt you will ever forget it. In fact, that's the whole idea, folks. Well, how well did your scale perform? How about you tell me? If your scale gave you the identical reading each and every time you weighed yourself, your scale has fantastic, near-perfect test reliability. Congratulations! If, however, your weight changed on different trials, it might be time to seek out a more reliable scale. For example... If you weighed 174.3 on one trial, 175.9 on another, and 1.78.8 on yet another, your scale's not that reliable. In psychoeducational testing, reliability refers to how consistent a test measure is. This is serious stuff, folks. Say I gave you an IQ or intelligence test and you scored 143. Hey, that's blow away fantastic. You are very gifted. Your score is classified as very superior. Years ago, you would have been labeled as a genius. But days later, I gave you the exact same IQ test. You felt terrific, 
you were not ill, and your score, 94. Hmm, that's below the average IQ of 100. I can tell you for sure that whatever IQ test we used, it was not reliable. The two readings are 46 IQ points apart. That's crazy huge. Think of how important this is. Imagine a personality test that diagnosed your client as normal one day and psychotic the next day. I don't know about you, but I'm not putting that much trust in that particular personality test. Now, guess what? Reliability is not the most important property of a test. It is the second most important factor. What's the most important? The answer is validity. How do we find validity? Simply put, validity asks, does the test really test what it is supposed to test? Let's go back to your scale experiment. To keep things simple, let's say you weighed 165 on every single trial. Wow, your scale is remarkable, very reliable. However, now let's just make this up. You go to the doctor's office. You didn't eat, drink, anything, and you have on the exact same clothes, shoes, the doctor's office has a certified scale, and you weigh 169. How is that possible? Simple. Your scale at home is reliable, but it's not valid. So here are some typical questions you might find on comprehensive exams about these topics. What are the two most important properties of a test? Answer, validity is number one and reliability is number two. Is a valid test always reliable? Yep, absolutely, yes. If you weigh 169 on a valid scale, you will always weigh 169, even if you weigh yourself a thousand times. However, a reliable test is not always valid. Nope. Remember this scale experiment you did. If you weighed 165 every time you weighed yourself, your scale was highly reliable, but wrong because the certified scale at the doctor's office checked you in at 169 pounds. Validity issues can have profound consequences. Here's an example from an organizational setting. I was on an advisory board for an educational program in the helping professionals, or professions actually. Our board was composed of very proficient helpers, researchers, professors, with blow away fantastic credentials, years of practice and teaching, lots of experience, awards, journal articles, even top textbook authors. I mean, seriously, as a committee, we were armed to the teeth with the right stuff. Anyway, the university gave the students a pre- and post-test. A pre-test to test their subject knowledge before they entered the program, and a post-test when they completed the program to make sure their knowledge and judgment improved. <clears throat> The folks who marketed the exam gave us some actual questions from the exam so we could experience precisely 
what the students encountered. Well, a very strange thing happened. On one question, nobody, that's no one, on our dream team advisory committee was sure what the correct answer was. And get this, folks, on another question, we all disagreed. After several minutes of intense arguments, excuse me, I mean discussions, I came to a different conclusion and said to my esteemed fellow committee members, quote, maybe this test is not valid. If we can't answer the questions, how could we expect a new student or recent graduate to come up with the answers? I'll leave you with a humorous but true example just to make sure you've got this. For many years, I taught in the same classroom. The building was built in the 1960s. One day, I noticed there was an old wooden ruler on a window ledge. I'm guessing because it had been in the sun for many years, it was obviously curved and warped quite a bit. Not straight like a ruler should be. Every semester, I would talk to the students about reliability and validity. I would measure a pen with a new ruler. The pen was approximately six inches long. However, when I measured it just seconds later with the old warped ruler, it indicated the pen was a hairline over seven inches. Now, the historic warped wooden ruler was reliable. It would always say the pen was a tick over seven inches, even though it was only six inches. I mean, if you measured it 500 times in the next few hours, it would always say it was over seven inches. But it wasn't valid. It was reliable, always gave you the same reading, but wrong, not valid. Hit the like button now so you won't forget, and tell me in the comments if these videos are helpful. Yours for better counseling, I remain Dr. Howard Rosenthal.